Do you ever wake up in the morning and feel like doing nothing? Do you ever just sit at your job or at school and just wish that the day would be over? Do you ever wish that you could be as motivated or self-disciplined as all these other people that you see on social media who always seem to be accomplishing their goals? Well, there is a very simple idea that will make you motivated every single day. And no, it's not some little mindset like being grateful or waking up early. This idea is real and millionaires and athletes and high achievers have been using it for years years to accomplish their goals. And I'm going to tell you what it is by sharing with you a very inspirational story. This is Dave. Dave is an 18 year old boy who was in his final year of high school. David had a pretty difficult life growing up where he lived with his father and his little sister. His mother passed away of cancer from a very early age. David's father had to work very hard in order to provide for the family. And the only time David got to see him was for like 15 minutes when he picked him up from school because soon after that, he had to start a second job. David found himself wanting to hang out with the older kids at a school because he saw them as the father figure that he didn't have. But unfortunately, they would pressure him to do bad things like steal candy or steal cigarettes, and they would encourage him to skip school and party with them instead his life was slowly heading in the wrong direction. But one night after David had been out at a party, he came home to see two police cars in his driveway. As David walked to his house, he noticed that the main window was broken. He walked inside and saw two policemen talking to his little sister who was crying. Are you David? The policeman said, uh, yeah, what's going on here? Where's my dad? Son, take a seat. The officer went on to explain that two burglars had attempted to break into their home and that David's father happened to be awake. As a result of him trying to defend himself against the burglars, one of the burglars decided to take his father's life. David was in complete disbelief. The policemen's words didn't seem real. They themselves didn't seem real. This was literally a nightmare. In a matter of hours, David had now become the man of the house and he had no family to turn to. He had very little money and he now had to figure out a way to take care of himself and his little sister. Otherwise, they would be homeless and hungry. David was forced to drop out of school and he immediately took on a full-time job at the local mechanic shop where he had been working part-time. He would be there there all day and just clean the dirty car parts and sweep the dirty floors. After work, he would come home, buy his little sister some cheap food, and then help her with her homework. He then cleaned the house, paid the bills, he was doing everything that a normal parent would do. But after a few months, David started to run out of money, and he could barely afford to buy food. David tried getting a second job, but nobody really wanted to hire some kid who looked poor, who had little to no skills, and had no high school education. Things were beginning to get really dark for David. He loved his sister very much and he just wanted her to have the best life possible. But right now he felt lost and alone. One day at the mechanic shop, David went up to his boss and asked if there was something that he could do to earn more money. And his boss said, well, I cannot pay you anymore for your current job, but one of our mechanics just quit and I'm looking for a replacement. So if you know how to repair cars, you could maybe do that. His boss said, yeah, I have some experience. David said. W really? I was kind of kidding, to be honest. You've been working here for like three months and you were just telling me now that you know how to fix cars? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I just thought that you didn't need a mechanic and I needed a job, so I was just doing my job, David said. Huh, okay. Well, in three weeks, I'm putting three potential new mechanics through a test to see who can repair the same broken engine the quickest. And I don't see why you couldn't be the fourth mechanic. How does that sound? That sounds great. Thanks. <laughs> okay, well, if you need to brush up on your mechanic skills, you can read this book. It's basically the all-knowing guide to engine repair. And just so you know, this new job pays a lot more than your current job now. Later in the night, after his sister was all taken care of, David got out this massive book and he thought to himself, if I can memorize every single thing in this book, maybe I can win this competition. Getting this job meant keeping himself and his little sister alive and not getting the job meant being homeless and hungry. The stakes were very high. So for the next three weeks, David was glued to this book and he read every single word four to five times and he would close his eyes and pretend that he was putting together the 
parts that he was reading about, and he would visualize the problems to look out for and visualize how to solve them. Because he did not have any real car parts to practice on, he started to pay really close attention to the car parts that he would clean at his work. He would focus on the feeling of the metal in between his hands, and he would study every groove and every angle, and he would analyze where all the parts would fit together. Whenever David felt tired or he felt like he couldn't work anymore, he would just look at the hollow cupboards in his house where there was almost no food and he would feel the cold air crawl up his spine because he could not really afford heating. But more importantly, he would look at his hungry, confused, sad little sister who still could not really comprehend that both her mother and her father were gone. A hardship like that is not meant for a child. David had no choice. For the next three weeks, he barely slept, barely ate, barely drank. All he did was was work. Finally, the competition day had come. David walked into the store and he saw the three other mechanics who all had their own tools, their own towels, their own cars. They looked very professional. Hey kid, how are you feeling? The boss said. Yeah, I'm okay. If you need to use my tools to fix the engine, I'll leave them here for you. Guys, in front of you there is an engine, but there is a problem with this engine, and all of you have the exact same problem, and the first person to fix the problem and start the engine will be hired for the new job here. Does this make sense? Everybody nodded with confidence while David's heart trembled. Okay, I will be in my office. I will come out when I hear an engine start. Start working right now. The three other mechanics all started to work right away. David could hear the tools clanking against the cold hard metal of the engine, and he could hear the grunts of the other men, and he could see the sweat coming down from their face. But David just looked at his engine for a moment, simply studying it. He could still see the sections in his book that talked about the most common problems in an engine, so he just slowly and systematically worked his way down the mental list. In the corner of his eye, he noticed that his boss was staring at him. As he worked on the engine, images of his little sister popped into his head. He could still remember, very clearly, coming home and seeing the cop cars, and seeing the shock and fear on his little sister's face. She was his motivation. After some time, David had fixed a few of the basic problems, and even some of the more advanced problems, but for some reason, it still would not start, and he could not really figure out why. As his hand came up to his face to wipe the sweat off his head, he noticed that his hand was really dirty, like really dirty, to the point of it being a little bit strange. He looked at where his hand was laying on the engine, and he noticed that it was on something called the fuel filter. Then instantly, he remembered a headline in his book called, Why a Clogged Fuel Filter Will Ruin Your Car. The filter is clogged. That's it. That's why it's not starting, David thought to himself. He frantically started to clean the filter, going as fast as he could. He could even feel a smile growing on his face while he was doing it, because he knew that once he did this, that the car would start. Every time that his heart would beat, the smile on his face became a little bigger and bigger. He was about to do the impossible. But then he heard it. The other mechanic's engine had started. The boss came out, shook the other mechanic's hand, and said, Well done. Come into my office and let's have a chat. David, could you please clean everything up here? In five short seconds, David's heart had shattered into pieces. As he started to clean everything up, tears filled his eyes. All the work he put in and all the pain that he went through was all for nothing. What am I going to do now? How am I going to provide for my sister? What about the rent and the heating? What am I go going to do for the winter? Thoughts like this were racing through David's head. A few hours later, after the winning mechanic had signed the contract to work there, the boss called David into the office. So, I looked at your engine. You almost had it, eh? You just didn't clean the fuel filter in time. Yeah. Being fast is a really important trait as a mechanic. People want their cars fixed quickly. Yeah, I get that. You know, when you said you wanted to become the fourth mechanic here, I actually did a little bit of research into you, and I read what happened to you and your family in the newspaper, and I'm very sorry for what happened. David said nothing. David, I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to be really honest with me, okay? Um, okay. Did you lie to me when you said you knew how to fix cars? David looked down for a moment. Um, no. His boss just stared at him. <sighs> yes, I lied. Okay, so I'm guessing you lied to me because you really wanted the job because of the extra money in order to take care of yourself and your little sister. Is this true? 
Yes. So your solution was to just say you knew how to fix cars, and then luckily I gave you my book, and then you studied it, and then you <laughs> came in here to compete against the real mechanics. Yes. <laughs> Wow, that is very bold of you, and really impressive that you actually managed to fix a car engine with little to no real experience. You must be a really fast learner. Well, I was pretty familiar with all the car parts. I mean, I clean them all day, every day. And you're modest. That is a really good trait. Sir, with all due respect, why are we talking about this? I lost. I saw the other mechanic sign the contract to work here. What's there to talk about? Yes, you did technically lose, and there's no way I will hire a mechanic with little to no real experience. David looked down, his heart still in pieces. But I'm actually here to offer you something different. David perked up. I want you to be my assistant and work under me for a while. I have never seen someone learn about cars that fast before, so you must have some talent. And you certainly have the motivation to work hard due to your family situation. But you do need some guidance. What, okay, what does this mean? Well, I definitely cannot pay you a full mechanic salary, but I will give you a raise to help take care of your home situation right now. Just the basics like food, heating, etc. And once you become an expert and a real mechanic, I'll start to pay you more. But there's one condition. Okay, what is it? You can never lie to me again about anything. The only reason why I'm making an exception for your past lie is because I know you just wanted to take care of your family, and I understand that. So, do we have a deal? Yes, I I'll never lie again. I'll be the hardest worker. I'll do anything you want me to do. Okay, great. Well, show up every day at 6 a.m. and be ready to work really hard hard. And from that point on, David became obsessed with cars. Whenever he was not taking care of his sister, he would be reading books about cars. He would talk to other mechanics, go to car conventions. This was the thing that gave him and his little sister a real shot at life. After six months, David had become one of the head mechanics at the shop, outperforming all the senior mechanics. Then fast forward another six months, and he had become one of the most skilled mechanics in the city, because he was so desperate and eager to learn more and more that nobody could keep up with him. In 1519, there was a man named Hernan Cortez, who set out on a mission to take over an island with 500 of his men. When they got to the island, they faced other people who did not want them to be there. Cortez then and ordered his men to burn the boats that they came in on, so there was no option to retreat. The only options were either to live or to die. Oftentimes, when it comes down to life or death situations, people discover an inner drive and new skills that they never knew they had. David was forced into a situation where he had to either sink or swim. He had to figure out a way to either provide for his family or to be homeless and hungry, which is pretty much like life or death. If you are watching this video and you have have an inclination to start your own business or to have a certain type of body, you might have to implement this burn the boats concept. Burning the boats for you could be quitting your job, then figuring out a way to pay your bills on your own, or maybe it's moving out of your parents' house and then refusing to take financial assistance from your parents or your friends. Maybe it's giving your friend $5,000 and then saying to him, if I don't have a six pack in eight months, you can keep the money. Doing this will force you to figure out a way to become successful because failure is no longer an option. This strategy is not for everybody though, and you certainly need to set realistic goals and you need to be careful, but some people need to do this in order to succeed.